Hello, my name is Brett Wilson with Shrink Ray Farms, and this gentleman right here is Eric from Accounting. Um, today, we're going to talk a little bit about animal adaptations. Now, specifically reptile adaptations. Now, there's lots of cool things that reptiles have adapted to to make themselves more likely to survive. Um, you might notice that this gentleman behind me is colored orange instead of green, which just seems like a really lousy adaptation because it would make him stand out. That's actually kind of the point. His color is orange because he's the dominant lizard in his territory. He's trying to advertise the fact that he's so tough that you don't want to mess with him. So instead of having to hide all the time, he actually makes his colors bright. Now, he's not the only animal that has bright colors. In fact, when you think about bright colored reptiles, the one that we mostly think about is something called a chameleon. Now, chameleons, just get the right slide there, chameleons have these amazingly bright colorations. This is the gorgeous panther chameleon. And what makes them so striking is those beautiful colors. Now they do work for camouflage, but they're also a form of communication. They have what's called chromatophores. And those chromatophores on their skin will expand or contract to make them different colors. Now, it's not just to blend in with their environment. They, there are only a few animals that have adapted to do that. There's the cuttlefish and the octopus, the only ones that can make their colors the same as the colors around them. Chameleons brighten their colors to warn off uh, rival males, to attract females, but they also do it to blend in with their environment as well. If they're wanting to go into a hide mode, their colors are a lot duller, and that the way that their pattern is broken up makes them harder to see in the dense foliage that they like to live. They like to live up in the trees, and so those that, that pattern color, that the breaking up of the pattern makes them much more difficult to see when they're up in the trees. But there are some other amazing adaptations that uh, that lizards specifically have uh, done to make themselves harder to or more likely to survive. And one of them is flight. Now, not flight flight, more like flying squirrel flight. This next time I show you is what's called a Draco lizard. Now these guys have ad adapted uh, a rib cage that stretches out on either side so that they can glide. Now they can't quite fly. They can't, you know, they can't sustain flight like a bird can, but what they'll do is they'll jump from tree to tree. They'll jump off a tree, they'll compress their ribs down flat so they spread out like a wing, and they can actually glide their body and they can aim themselves at the place that they want to go to. Now, there's a lot of great reasons for this. One, it's a really efficient and quick way to move through the forest. If the feeding's not so good on one tree, they'll jump off that one, glide to the next one, land on the side of the tree, climb up there and do some hunting. Or if a predator is going after them, they'll jump off of the uh, they'll jump off a tree and they'll glide to safety. Now I got another animal I want to show you right here. Um, this next one is what's called a New Caledonian giant gecko. These guys are native to a little island near New Zealand called New Caledonia. Now, one of the coolest adaptations. I think that any animal has come up with is sticky toes. Geckos have sticky toes. Uh, now they're sticky not like the way that you would think. A lot of people think that it's suction cups that allow them to stick. It's not suction or that maybe that it's uh, that it's like little claws. They have claws that stick. It's actually not claws. I've got a really beautiful close-up of a gecko toe I'll show you here. So you'll notice the first thing is that their toes on the bottom are striped. And what those stripes are, are folds of skin. There's layers upon layers of skin. It actually gives them more surface area. It's more space to stick with. And on those, on those folds of skin are thousands and thousands of teeny tiny microscopic little hairs. This is what they look like. Now that is uh, what's a, uh, called an electron microscope picture of it. And that's a, a microscope that's so powerful it can see things that are almost imperceptible even to the most powerful microscope. Um, now you'll notice that at the base of those hairs, they're, they're, they're fairly thick and they get thinner as they get up to, towards the top here. What it is is that the, the base of those hairs is 300 times thinner than the hair on the top of your head. And as they go up, they split. So by the time they get to the top there, they're sm they get smaller and smaller. By the time they get to the top, they're so small, that they actually interact with individual molecules. Every molecule has an attractive force called van der Waals forces, and those little tiny hairs allow them to stick to things that are smooth as smooth as glass. They can stick to walls. They can even hang from the ceiling. Another cool adaptation this animal has is a tail that grabs like a monkey. It's called prehensile. And on the end of their toe, or end of their tail, they actually have one of those lateal pads. So they actually have a toe on the end of their tail. All right, we're going to put this guy away. This is Curry. So, uh, 
Next up, I'm going to do a little snake for you guys. Now, it doesn't seem like, if I can get my gecko to put his toe back in, sorry. Uh, it doesn't seem like the uh, not having legs would be a good adaptation. But that's ex exactly, actually, exactly what it is. Um, these animals actually evolved out of legs. Snakes used to have legs, which they don't anymore. Now you can you can tell that snakes used to have legs because of things like like this right here. You see these two dots right there? These are called spurs. Now the this animal doesn't have the legs anymore, but it still has a pelvis. And those dots are bones that are attached to either side of their pelvis. And they come out on, on both sides of their cloaca. So you actually can find the tail on this animal really easy. That's how you can tell where the tail is on a snake, is because the the uh, or the the tail always starts at the cloaca. So you can see he's got a short stubby tail. But evolving out of legs is a super, super handy thing for some animals. There are lizards that don't have legs. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, if it's a reptile and it doesn't have legs, why don't you just call it a snake? Well, there's, there's things that the, the legless lizard will have that snakes don't have, like the ability to drop their tail, which snakes don't have. Um, but way back when, these guys used to actually have those have legs. They evolved out of them because it's easier to move through some places without limbs. Where the legless lizards live, they live in what's called savannas, where there's lots of tall grass. So it's easier to actually move underneath those grass than trying to run across the top of it. So actually losing legs is a really cool adaptation as well. Now, I think the neatest adaptation on this guy is the heat pits. Right on the upper part of his lip, there are a row of holes. Let's bring that mitts close so you can see those holes. Let me get my camera to focus. There it is. Now those holes are what's called heat pits. They're specialized scales on the upper lip that actually see infrared light. Infrared light is heat. So they can actually see heat with the scales on their face. That's a pretty cool adaptation. Now, a lot of times when people think about snakes, the thing that they're thinking about is venom. Now, venom is an adaptation as well. Venom started out as saliva, and, and over time it turned into something that's a little bit more lethal. Um, venom itself is an amazing adaptation, but there are some snakes that have even taken a step further. Take, for example, the spitting cobra. Not only does it produce something, a toxic liquid that, is, that it can inject from its fangs, but, not only, but it can also keep its enemies at a distance by spraying that out through their teeth. That's a pretty wild, pretty nutso adaptation, I think. Now, I've got another lizard that I want to show you. It's the last of the, the uh, last of the lizards I'm going to show you today. Um, this next one's called a frilled lizard. Now, it has two super cool adaptations. One, it'll do this the frills and puts the frills out, but it's also bipedal. Let me get him out. These guys are native to Australia. Now, as I said, if he gets scared, he has these frills that he'll put out like this. And that's actually, it's just to make him look bigger and tougher than he is. Now, he's also bipedal, which means he runs on two legs. Now, there's two reasons for this. One, it makes him taller. So when he's standing on his back legs, he's twice as tall. But it also, uh, but it also allows him to run further than a lot of the lizards can as well. He can actually run faster with four legs, but he can run further with two legs. Um, I actually got a really cool video I'll show you here, what that looks like. If I can get my thing to work. There we are. So there he is running. On a, actually, I feel like every time I watch this, I want him to be going, ah! as he runs along. <clears throat> so running on the back legs is, is, is a super cool adaptation, but there's one other lizard that's actually taking it a, a step further. Um, there's an animal called a basilisk lizard, Basilisk lizards come from South America. Now, not only do they do that bipedal running, just like this guy does, but they actually can do it across the surface of water. Now, what these guys are doing is, is they're actually catching enough, there's enough surface tension that, they're, that they don't sink. So they're basically kind of catching bubbles on their toes, and they're actually running across the surface of the water. And they can do it for great distances. They can run for yards and yards and yards like that. Now, not to say that they're not good swimmers, too. They'll run until they run out of steam, and then they hit the water, and then they swim really fast. But when they're on the surface of water like that, they can really, really get moving. All right. 
So that is the last of my animals for you guys today. Um, again, uh, really thanks to the Timberland Regional Libraries for having us out again. And don't forget, there are lots more fun activities and events that are going on through your Timberland Regional Libraries. Um, check with your librarians about book checkouts. They are still available. Just because it's summer doesn't mean we stop reading. In fact, there's summer reading program as always is a huge treat. Make sure you guys are participating in that. See, he agrees. Alrighty, again, my name is Brett with Shrink Ray Farms. Thanks again so much, and we'll see you next week when we talk about snakes.